Hey everybody, it's Bob Murphy here again. In the last video, I talked about President Obama's call for a $9 minimum wage in his State of the Union address. Now I got some pushback from people, even many fans of the free market, who said things along the lines of, yeah, Murphy, you know, you economists, you have your theories, you're supply and demand curves, blah, 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 but come on, in the real world, there isn't this perfectly competitive labor market. Employers do not actually pay workers their marginal product the way you guys assume in your textbooks and on the blackboard. And so taking into account the way the real world works, and maybe it's because of government intervention, I don't know, but the point is, in reality, you've got greedy employers out there, and they do not pay workers what they're worth. And so in that context, maybe you should be more open-minded and not be so cynical about a law that, say what you will, does give poor, unskilled workers more money. Okay, so in light of that complaint, let me just bring up three facts about reality based on objective empirical evidence and in the uh, information portion of this video I'll give you a link to a blog post where we flesh some of this out empirically. Okay, number one, ask yourself why is it, if that's your worldview, that not everybody in the United States earns the minimum wage? Because in reality, of course, that's not true at all. The vast majority of workers in the real world, not in my textbook, not in the blackboard, in the real world, most workers earn far above the minimum wage. So if you have a view of reality, if your model of how the world works is that employers are going to have a race to the bottom and they're going to pay the bare minimum subsistence level, except, oh shoot, the government's forcing me to pay these workers more. If that's your model, well then how come every worker doesn't earn the minimum wage? How come brain surgeons don't earn the minimum wage? How come pitchers for the Yankees don't earn the minimum wage? How come the guy working uh, in an automobile plant doesn't earn minimum wage? Because again, workers across the spectrum typically earn more than the minimum wage. So why is that? And I think the answer is obvious. It's because of competition. Even real world imperfect competition subject to all the caveats that we don't have a perfectly competitive market the way some of us might desire. The real world as it is still has enough competition among employers that they typically pay far above the bare legal minimum. So these mechanisms we talk about as economists are in operation out there and most workers are earning more than the bare minimum the government sets. So you need to make sure your critique at least accounts for that real world fact. Another uh, consideration is the fact that the rate of unemployment among teenagers is far higher than among the general population. And again, I'll give you a blog post in the information pertaining to this video if you want to see the exact numbers in the charts. So that is a little bit odd to explain if you don't believe in the critique of the minimum wage that the standard economist offers. In contrast, if I'm right, if the minimum wage makes it illegal for, work, or for employers to hire workers who have a low level of skills, and that's going to make them hire fewer such workers, well then it's obvious. Of course you would see a higher unemployment rate among teenagers than among the general population. And there's another interesting fact if you look at the empirical evidence is that the last few times the minimum wage has been raised, the gap between the teenage unemployment rate and the population at large unemployment rate has gotten bigger. Okay, so it's, it's not merely that, oh, the teenage unemployment rate went up, it's that it went up more relative to the unemployment rate at large. And so yes, the teenage unemployment rate right now is at a huge level, but it's not enough just to say, well, it's because there's an awful recession. Because the point is the teenage unemployment rate is higher now vis-a-vis -vis the uh, general population unemployment rate. So the un general un unemployment rate is higher too because of the recession, but the point is the teenage rate went up even more. So why should that be the case? Well, the obvious economist response is to say because they also have been raising the minimum wage in recent years, fairly substantially. And so it's not surprising then that it's harder for employers to employ these unskilled workers, typically teenagers. So in summary, I think the standard economic logic has a lot going for it. It matches the empirical data well. If you want to just throw your hands up and say, no, 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 the real world doesn't work the way you economists think in your models, okay, that's fine, but then the burden of proof is on you to explain these facts as I've laid out. In summary, 
having the government make it illegal for employers to pay less than a certain amount, I think is a surefire recipe to make the least skilled members of the population be in an even worse situation where now they can't even legally get hired because it's not in anybody's direct interest to give them a job. Thanks everybody, this has been Bob Murphy.